Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carl. I'm happy that you're here. I'm hoping you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out. I just got back from the house and something interesting took place, not between me, but between one of the contractors and one of their employees. It's a personal matter. I won't get into much detail here, but it got me thinking. How do we find good contractors or good people that can work with us or for us as we go through the property development? Because at the end of the day, we need to make money and time is money. Back in the car, on our way to the Darby house. However, I got some news to share with you. Last night was a very eventful night. I had to rush to the emergency room and get my finger wrapped up and looked at for stitches because unfortunately I have a big cut on my finger. However, thank you to the NHS staff. They saw me in lightning quick time. I was in and out within 10 minutes. So thank you very much. Again, the NHS superheroes continue. Now, back to why we're in the car. We're on our way to the Darby house and we now need to go look at the uh, doors. So we've been told that if we wanna do an HMO strategy, let's remember what that is. That's a house of multiple occupancy, which means if you have three or more individuals who are unrelated to each other, who are living in the same house, you might need or you will need fire doors in the property. Now, we're gonna check the regulations here in the Darby sure council to see what that means like if that's something we have to abide by from my understanding is an hmo technically is five or more in darby but uh this house is only a three bedroom property so we need to see uh, what that will look like and what we need to abide by now other things that are going on the electrician is still in the property what he's in there doing is he's moving some of the cabling and some of the wires in the uh, property so that we can have proper lighting. Again, we're trying to add value in this property in a simple way. We're trying to create a third bedroom. You would have seen in the previous video, we've opened up the kitchen. Jesus, look at this big old bus. <laughs> you would have seen that we opened up the kitchen to create that family dining kitchen space. Again, this is a very small house. It's 120 years old, but we got to try to bring it up to a modern standard. The electrical cable inside the house Part of that has already been upgraded and rewired, so it's a partial rewiring of the property. So I'm at the property. What's going on today? So we got door jams or door surrounds being put in, the door frames being put in. We have the plaster board going up on the walls now. If you look at previous videos, we've done the ceilings, so we've gotten that going. Um, house has now been cleared. There's a minor few things, and we've put the damp proof course down in the ground floor. So that way uh, we can stop and address the damp issue that we found in the house. So work continues, it goes on, let's go. So I'm out front. Dave has asked me to make sure that I get his uh, carpentry business in the uh, video. So I'm doing this, he's upstairs. He doesn't know that I'm filming right now, but uh, when he sees the video, he'll love it. So this is Dave. He works out of the East Midlands here, Darby, Tamworth. Look, we finally get to come outside into the backyard or the garden, as they say here in England. However, this house is so old that it actually has an outhouse. So have a look at this thing. I don't think I'll be using it anytime soon.
So the question I get asked the most is, Carl, why Derby, England? Why here in the East Midlands? How did you arrive? So I arrived here a couple years ago because I got a job offer for a large engine manufacturer here in Derby, here in the East Midlands of England. And that's how I arrived here on the UK soil. They sponsored a visa for me. I had a five-year visa. After that, I got what's called indefinite leave to remain, which now allows me to stay in the country as long as I want. I'm just one less than a citizen. I actually could get a British passport if I wanted one, but that's why I'm here today. Now, where I am standing right now is in front of where a bank used to be. And this is actually where I got my first bank account. A true story about that is that when I first arrived into the country, when I first arrived in the country, one of the things that was required is I needed to have a bank account. Nobody wanted to go first. So the bank wanted me to have a bill, but nobody wanted to give me a bill because I had no bank account. So I was stuck in a catch 22. I was stuck in limbo. The bank wouldn't give me a bank account and I couldn't get a bill because I had no bank account. So I had to go get a letter from the company, from, from the HR department to show to the bank to say, this is where I work at so that the company could pay my wages into the bank. Now it was just a parking lot, but when I first got here, it was a bank. So the builders put in damp proof course all through here. That's what these white spots are. All the way through in the living room to address the damp issue. It's also had to do it here as you go into the stairs. So all this here is the damp proof course. There will be a skim coat done on this to address it all in here and on the floors. But this is the first start of the damp proof to address the damp in the house. So let's talk about how do we find contractors? How do we find people that can actually do the value added work that you might need? Well, most people might know someone who does this type of line of work, but I find it best to go around and do the old fashioned way. So the contractor that we have at the property today, we found this one just driving around the neighborhood of a, another property that I own that we might do a tour on later on this channel but I just went and knocked talked to them had them come over and give a quote and since we're talking about quotes you have to remember it's very important I don't care if it's your brother I don't care if it's your uncle your aunt whoever it might be who does this line of work you must always get three quotes no matter what the job is getting three quotes will always protect you so that way you can get an itemized bill so you can evaluate the quotes specifically because no matter what you do on the first walkthrough or pass through the property, you're never gonna catch everything. However, if you have an itemized bill, you can try to exclude certain things that don't need to be done so that way you can stay within your budget. As we've talked about in previous videos, setting the budget and trying to adhere to that budget is paramount or you will never make any money in property development because unfortunately, everybody's out to get you, everybody's out to make a buck. So you and you alone have to protect your budget and try to maintain that budget at all costs. I've talked about other ways how we've shown that we went and got a kitchen sink and a bath sink for free 99, how we're trying to source good items off of uh, Facebook Marketplace, how we're trying to get creative, how I like to go look in any big box retailer I like to go look at their clearance items to see what they might have. Oof, that just reminds me of a good point. The flooring that we're gonna put in this property, you have to see. Wait until I tell you the deal I got on that. If you think the kitchen sink and the bathroom sink was a steal, wait till you see the quality of flooring that we're gonna put on the ground floor in this property. 
I mean, it's amazing. It's really good quality, and I got it for a bargain price.